The story of Android goes back ages ago, as in the Stone Age. Wait a minute, that can't be true. Even though it seems like we've had the Android OS on our devices since forever, it's only been 15 years since it's launched. That's unbelievable, right? You've seen all the buzz around Apple's iPhone 15 launch, but believe it or not, it was the same hype when Android came out with their very first operating system. So in today's video, let's learn all about how Android started and was acquired by Google, what the specs of their first ever phone were, and why it's so popular today. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Today, the Android OS is present on approximately 70% of phones. It's undoubtedly the most popular operating system. The Android era officially began on September 23rd, 2008. This was when the Android 1.0, the first official version, launched. It was the birth of a new era in mobile tech, but it all happened because Google acquired Android, though it wasn't as simple as it sounds. Android Incorporated was a standalone company founded in Palo Alto, California in 2003 by Andy Rubin, Rich Miner, Nick Sear, and Chris White. Rubin faced difficulty in attracting investors for Android. He did get help from a few friends, but that was about it. In 2005, Rubin tried to negotiate deals with Samsung and HTC, but shortly after, Google acquired Android for at least 50 million. In retrospect, this had to have been Google's best deal ever. Android's key employees, including Rubin, Miner, Sears, and White, joined Google as part of the acquisition. By 2008, both Nokia and BlackBerry announced touch-based smartphones to rival the iPhone 3G, and Android also began focusing on touchscreens. The first commercially available smartphone with Android was called the HTC Dream, aka the T-Mobile G1, and it was announced on September 23, 2008. So how was this first ever Android phone? The HTC Dream used a soft, smooth, matte plastic shell and it was available in three colors, white, black, and bronze. It had a distinctive design feature called the chin at the bottom. And this chin had five navigation buttons on it. Call, home, menu, back, and end call. The phone also had a clickable trackball in the center for scrolling and selecting. The Dream used a 3.2 inch capacitative touchscreen LCD at a resolution of 320 by 480, something that isn't even available in today's times. The screen could be slid along the curved hinge to sew the QWERTY for the QWERTY keyboard, because, well, there was no virtual keyboard at the time. The Android operating system integrated various Google services, such as Gmail, Maps, Search Talk, and YouTube. It also had an email app that supported POP3 and IMAP, and, well, without going into all the boring deets, these were basically instant messaging apps at the time. Andy Rubin, a key figure in the creation of Android, shared an interesting tidbit about Android's early days. Initially, their vision was to develop Android for digital cameras rather than smartphones. The goal was to create an advanced camera system integrated with cloud storage for efficient photo management. However, in 2005, when Google acquired Android, the project took a sharp turn. Andy Rubin transitioned into a pivotal role within Google, and the company redirected its effort towards adapting Android for mobile phones. What started as an idea for camera integration evolved into the foundation of a revolutionary mobile platform. And we're now so used to this mechanism, it's pretty much everywhere. The Dream Phone had a 3.15 megapixel rear camera with autofocus, something that probably make you cringe today. But the launch was a huge success, and it really made me think about other successes in the world. 